We've had a bit of a long day. He, he, he's saying we look tired, I think is what he's saying. He's not, he's not like a backhanded compliment here, but uh, the insults aside from that horrible, horrible host we've had, we need to get a new one in here. I think we need to get Melly all up on that stage. But anyway, that aside, we do want to hear your thoughts on the next game. Fantastic points raised by both the spectators there, actually bringing up very interesting factors. The fact that Living Train have had time to reset, yeah. think things through, maybe kind of discuss any mistakes that were made that they weren't too happy with and kind of work them out. Maybe minuscule ones saying, okay, the communication wasn't great here or there, and now they can kind of really come and prove it. Whereas Denova, maybe you've got to take into account they're warmed up, they're ready. That last game they showed on Himmelsdorf was fantastic. So certainly two very different teams here and two very different states of mind. Now, where's your money line with that in mind? Not taking too much into the stats just yet, mm. but just kind of in their kind of mental state. Yeah, I think so. I think um, you made a very good point. Uh, obviously, Dinova's quite... You know, I think it had a very hard set of five games. Very hard. Well, yep. Slemming Train, not only have they had uh, a quite easy set of game, but they also had that rest. Um, you know, Lemming Train were the more convincing team. That's, that's, yep. that's that goes by just the scoreline, not just the play style. So I think Dinova are going to struggle a lot. But then again, they are a team that needs to be uh, needs to warm up, need to get themselves into it. So I think uh, it's going to be a very tight game. Um, but I, I'm just thinking Lemming Train right now. Really, you're backing them, even though Denova were your favourites for some time. Was it just the yeah. last performance you didn't think really? showed them in their best way maybe yeah i think i think it's really that I, I, they look shaky they had a lot of errors um uh, we saw the interview with ronnie you know they they really weren't didn't show their best side um and that could just be indicative of their kind of day they're having whilst living train just seemed to be on point and they seem to have uh, really done their homework so just based on that I, i'm gonna have to say them yeah and, and it is a hard one to call. Looking at their previous performances, they were tied all even last time they met up in Play Day 5 in Season 3. So, talking of that, let's start looking towards those stats here because that's a very important factor. Let's throw up Lenning Train stats to remind you of what they were so damn good at. Really good team. Certainly have their very unique strengths. And, well, in my eyes, Lenning Train have always been a bit of an unpredictable element of such a shaky start to their season. Um, they really started to kind of pull into their own. That was what I really liked. They showed their strength later on. When they really had their backs to the wall, they stepped up. Whereas Denova had a bit of a more, not, I wouldn't say comfortable ride, but they certainly proved themselves in a bit of a more m kind of smooth manner, should I say. So, you know, Mouse Sports have always been the team that we've kind of given them a bit of jip for their aim. They've never been the strongest aimers in this uh, compared to some of the other teams at their level, let's say. Um, but they certainly hold their own. They're very good at that. They, yeah. they can certainly keep themselves on, on a level playing field. Um, but kind of looking at uh, the previous results between these two, uh, it is in favor for, for Dinova, two for one, one draw each as well. That's when they first played in match day five. So yes, the online stats do go over to Dinova, but Lemming Train have more experience with their current lineup than Dinova has. Okay, they've had a couple of roster changes, but Dinova has pretty much had a whole new team here. Um, so I think, honestly, uh, Lemming Train have that consistency, they have that player ability. Denova slightly disheartened by that previous game, but it, it's going to be awfully close. Um, you can see Phoenix in your screen, Winnie the Pooh there as well, running to the right. Um, they look all pretty happy, they actually look pretty content with themselves, um, and, and I think they're just going to get themselves uh, on the go. There's Just Cause from Virtus Pro. We won't be seeing him in action until tomorrow. <laughs> We have to wait for that one. Exactly. But, you know, the winner of that, of this match, will be going on to fight Just Cause and Co. And, and obviously the Team Virtus Pro, though. So this means everything. This is really crunch time for them. Yeah, and it's all about how they turn up in that moment. We've said it time and time again. It really does come down to how, just how they play. And I'm curious if we have either of the stats we can throw up here to take you through it. If not, we can just keep you know our eyes on what we saw just moments ago, really. It's, it's how they previously played. That is the big important factor here, is both teams had their own hardish route through. I'd say Lemming Train had maybe the cleaner route, but they certainly kind of showed up towards the end there and just kind of really owned it themselves. And Denova did exactly the same. Himmelsdorf being the absolute pinnacle of that. And whereas we saw the Abbey uh, being the defining game for the previous matchup, whereas Himmelsdorf obviously after seeing Rumbo, Prokhorovka, Ensk and Mainz. And Maps is a very important factor as well because both teams maybe have very different strengths, completely different set of first three maps picked. Obviously the first in the first matchup was Ensk, the first in the second was Rumberg, then Himmelsdorf and Prokhorovka, then Abbey and Ensk. A very, very different route and very different team styles. Now, what sort of map picks do you think we're going to see for those first three there? So I would have thought Ensk straight away for Dinova. Um, 
but judging what's what's nice for Lemming Train is that they won their three maps uh, easily. They won their three maps in a row. That was it. For De Nova, yep. they lost some maps. So Lemming Train know the weaknesses for De Nova. They know what maps they're actually not playing that well today. Ents comes to mind. Uh, uh, you know, they really they really need to start looking towards the previous results. Um, also, the results they won in terms of offline. You know, the one win Lemming Train has against De Nova, uh, uh, match day, uh, I believe that was match day 20, actually. So the end of the season. Um, so... Yeah, I think I need to be looking at the maps. Himmelsdorf, I would say, is a given. Banau, uh, Banau Ensk for De Nova. Um, perhaps get out of Matt Abbey as well. Abbey or Ensk or Abbey and Mines. Those two are, are very unfavorable. You could see on Mines from the north, De Nova crushing uh, Kazan crew because yep. of the spawns they had. Um, definitely, definitely helped them there. So, yeah. Abbey and Mines would be my, my prediction as well. But uh, we haven't seen steps yet. So that could also be falling out of favor since the changes. And it's interesting, I thought the map was more evened up after the change, giving a bit more of an option towards the other side there, but it, it seems they're not quite fancying that one, so maybe looking at a different option, different viable choices. Clearly, De Nova have a lot to talk about after that last game. They will be taking their time in this one. They do not want to rush anything. And it's all about the next couple of minutes that make sure that they are really on point. Um, obviously, you, you, you know, the, the thing that really kind of struck true to me was how quiet they were throughout the whole game. They never had that team talk that Kazan did. They never were anywhere near as loud. But at the end of it, they were literally out of their streets. YR was, you know, straight up there towards Ronnie, just, you know, all together. And it was, it was brilliant to watch because they really had to fight hard at the end. And maybe they can kind of convert that confidence right now because it's a little bit fresher, whereas uh, obviously... Uh, Lemming train. They were, you know, they've had time to cool down. They're kind of back towards where they started. You know, uh, I was having a quick word with Carmen, and he was fairly quietly confident. He's very pleased with his performance, and he wasn't sure, you know, if it was just Kazan playing very well or maybe De Nova having a bit of a bad game. But he's certainly going to be finding out soon as the teams are just setting up, getting themselves comfortable here. And we can kind of talk about how they ended the season online, at least, to get to the position. So it's probably the closest matchup we've seen so far. So Lemming Train ended up in third after that fantastic ending of the season, taking down Playing Ducks, taking down Odin Mortis um, and Evil Pan Squad, only really losing to Verlus Pro in that massive win streak they had. Whereas Denova were a little bit shaky towards the end of their season, which may be a little bit more fresh in their minds as they were on that fourth point. I think they're just about ready to get towards the map picks. And just to finish off about Denova, you know, they, they, they managed to beat Spell, but they lost to Dignitas and Verdus Pro quite on a recent basis. So hopefully we are ready for those map picks and we can kind of head over towards that one and see what they're going to be choosing. Because as we mentioned, uh, you know, we saw Denova struggling on quite a few, whereas Lemming Train didn't really show their weaknesses if they have any just yet. And that really might come to the forefront here in the choices they bring. I'm just waiting for the uh, admin to give us the go-ahead here to head over towards that one. I think they're just kind of having a little chat about it, having to think, seeing what's the best choice possible. And as we mentioned, uh, what, what do you think the first two maps going out are going to be? I think it's going to be Abbey and Mines. Do so you think Abbey I and think, Mines I, I think out? Mines is just too favoured towards the north, and I think Abbey is just a little bit too complicated in terms of play style. Uh, but Steps, as I said, hasn't been, uh, hasn't been picked. Although the only changes were really towards that right side where they added... Uh, some hills, so you can now go over there from the south. Um, but the first map is being picked. Uh, picking first, I believe, is Elian. Um, so he's going to be banging out Abby yep. as predicted. Okay, that's fair enough. Good choice there, um, I think. Yeah, yeah, I think that was, it was a given. Um, now we've got one more ban, then the, uh, the order of the maps will be playing from five down to our first one. And now Ronnie's going to be banning his map out. It's going to be Mines, Abbey and Mines, as well predicted. predicted. Yep. Yep. So, think, uh, what, where do you put steps in that mix then? Because we haven't seen it played yet. And last time it was left as a decider match between the first matchup. And do you reckon that's going to be there again? I think it, I think it it's going to be fifth. it's going to be fifth. It, as it is, it's indeed fifth. Uh, the fifth map will be steps. So that yeah. big open. Uh, uh, really fast played map, probably one of my favourites, um, falling out of favour with the teams, but understandably so. Um, now heading up towards our fourth map, I think Prokhorovka. I don't think that's a bad choice. I or think maybe it's certainly. Ensk. Oh, Ooh, Ensk. Ensk. Yeah, Ensk. Ensk, interesting choice there because we saw that kind of being the downfall a little bit um, before of uh, Denova not really showing their strength on it to the extent we know they can play it. They, they pretty much threw that one. So very interested to see um, how they kind of face off on that if they do get to that fourth map. And now the third, obviously, coming up next. I think Ronnie's going to be uh, picking this one up. I think it's a Prokhorovka, if I can lip read. I probably can't, but uh, I'm going to pretend I can. Let's just stare at map three until it comes up. Did I guess right? Here is the question. Do you ever play, when when you're playing, uh, like, 
you know, when you have to guess something, like countdown or something, don't yeah. you just answer, university challenge, for <laughs> instance, just instead of trying to answer the question, just say egg to each question and eventually you might be right. I've never it's tried great it, game, but right? I was desperately wrong. Or guess, wrong, who's, so, uh, guess who's, who, who's going to answer the question. So Himmelsdorf is going to be the third map here. Uh, Prokhorovka, the second, and Ruhrenberg wow, will Ruhrenberg. be the first map. So Ruhrenberg, Prokhorovka, Himmelsdorf, Ensk and finally Steps is our five maps in that order. Um, surprising a little bit. Mm. I guess they're kind of wanting to split things up here. They have that open map, Prokhorovka, in the middle of Ruhrenberg and Ensk. But this is how it started last time. Kaznikru and Dinova played on Ruhrenberg, the first map. Kaznikru just absolutely obliterated them there. And I'm very interested to see how much uh, Lemming Train were watching that one. Because clearly they're going to be watching these games. And if they were taking note, maybe they found a little bit of a weakness there. But... That exchange, who was it? Was it uh, who, who was it who got that massive bit of damage on Ruhrenberg? It was a 2 mx 1390. It was. It was a Veco. Ve Veco. Yeah. Um, yeah. Absolutely took out. I think that it was Veco? international, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it Veco and Nalem, and, and yeah. it was international YR. Yeah, YR stayed alive for a little while, but I think it was international, which got melted in a second. So I'll be very interested to see if they go for that double uh, 1390 play into the city again. Maybe just put one in, because we saw one being the more favorable start there normally. Yeah? So that's kind of how they play out, put one into the city and then they kind of go for the head-to-head. -head. But maybe that's what Ronnie's discussing now, just kind of having a chat through it, going, okay, the way we played it before didn't really pay off in our favor. Let's adapt it to something that we think is going to really kind of play into our hands, because they didn't really get a chance to actually play it out. It was pretty much over on the offset. Once they'd lost those two 1390s, it, it was never looking pretty. You can't really lose a 2.30.90s. Not straight they're, they're away. They're such a big uh, part. And the worst thing about losing the 1.30.90 first is that your second 30.90 is pretty much history as long as the other team is playing properly. So, yeah, it makes such a big difference. You can see the two old schoolers from this team, Ronnie and YR. Actually, uh, I believe these two were in the team Red Tide back in the day, Russian Pirates as well. Um, two of the old school members. The only two re really guys left. Um, along with, uh, I believe, Winnie the Pooh. He's, he's been around for a while as well. Um, so some, it's good to see them continue playing whilst you can see uh, Nia Pozzoni and uh, Carmen there in front uh, for Lemming Train. And what do you think of their discussions right now? Do you think that, you know, Lemming Train look very quiet, actually? Nowhere near to the extent of what? Well, just wait 10 minutes and Carmen's going to be screaming his head off. That's a very it, good it's, point. It's like yin and yang right now. He's, he's got to keep the balance of the universe. Point, right. in, exactly. Okay. That's his point. Um, yeah. So eventually, he just gets extraordinarily vocal. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is a very or different violent, Nova. Sometimes, um, <laughs> you know, last time we saw Danova, um, they were sat down, and I think the phrase was, you know, they literally steely faced. They yep. they barely looked at the camera. They barely spoke to each other. Here, it's a very, very different kind of ordeal. Very much in discussion. Probably talking over the last time they played in Ruhrenberg, what went wrong, what went right, and I think it's the best thing to do in this situation because clearly Lemming Train saw it, and they're going to know exactly what they're coming up against if Danova aren't ready. Yeah, so it is literally that. It's if Dinova are ready for them, but you know, going back to that point of how how quiet they are at the end when they won, it all exploded. All that emotion, all that pressure onto them, um, just just exploded in in one big eruption. Uh, but now I think Lemming Train's almost in battle. Um, I know Dinova is, so we should be able to get underway. You can see the screens on on your screen there. So three to five minutes uh, is is pretty much the predicted. Uh, time until we do get going. Yeah. Now, I think we can put our minds towards tank picks. Mm -hmm. Now, we didn't see much special coming out. We did see, actually, was it what was it a 110 was chosen? But that very, that really didn't come into play last time we saw this. It was kind of negated immediately. Do you think we might see it again? I think the 110 is, is one of those picks where it works once, and then once it, it's been picked, you kind of think, ooh, well, this, this is not going to work again. The, the MX-5200 is a great, a great counter that, for instance. So, no, I don't think so. I think I don't think uh, Dino is going to fall for the same trick twice. Uh, they are a very good adaptive team. Um, I think yep. also Lemming Train a lot more happy to play the standard lineup on Ruhrenberg. I've never really seen them. Oh, actually, they've picked double IS3, so I guess I'm wrong. They picked double IS3 uh, and tanks like that, even three IS3. So perhaps they're going to go for that this time around. Um, but having seen uh, Kazna Crew win. Will they decide to do it again? Because, as I said, Dinova are not a team to lose twice to the same strategy. That's a very good point. And, and the amount they're talking now, I think they're literally ironing out those kinks. And 
And once again, ladies and gents at home, I'm going to have to throw this one to you guys to get your predictions through to me. I want you to tweet at they call me pansy, which is myself, and obviously at laughter w o t, and make sure you use that hashtag w g l e u, and let me know who you think is to be winning this one. Don't worry about the maps, maybe the score if you really fancy it. But I want to know your thoughts. Do you think you know? Lemon train, a little bit refreshed, had time to think it over, watch the other game, learn what they want to be doing, have the advantage here, or do you think maybe De Nova, you know, they're hot now, they, you know, they're on a roll, they've got the confidence high, they can convert it. Look, they look really focused here. I'm not sure if he's just staring someone That's down in the bad distance. Bad news, I believe. <laughs> Uh, he's not someone you want to mess with, you know what I mean? He looks very serious. Russians in general, I don't think. They, they do look with. very mm. serious people. Yep. And uh, <laughs> they do not mess around with the tanks, is what I've learned. Very, uh, very big fan of those. So, very interested to see how this one pans out. So, make sure you get your tweets through to us with the winner of this game. Obviously, Lemming Train up against Denova. Both teams winning their game, some in a slightly easier fashion than the other. So, I think they're just picking out the sides here. I think Denova will be starting in the south. So, not too indicative of a tank pick being specific to the south spawn, I'd say, not on Ruenberg at least. But take me through some of the possible outlying picks here that we might see come through. So, we saw a 110, which we know has got its favorable um, picks within the WGL NA side. But is there any other tanks you could see maybe working here? Do you think a 416 has its place? T32 uh, Pershing, I'm just kind of throwing names at you that we've seen slowly but surely come into fashion. Maybe even a Waffle Tiger. Uh, is there anything you see might come through here just as a bit of a surprise? I think you said them all there, the 110, the IS-3. Uh, probably one of these two will pick it, but, you know, I, I'm still a, a massive fan of that double uh, T-69, AMX-3090, or double yep. AMX-3090, 50-100 lineup. Maybe, uh, maybe throw a Pershing in there if you really feel like feel like it, but IS-3 is not a massive fan. You, know, you can always, a lot <laughs> of people think, okay, we got a lot of uh, HP and a lot of firepower, so we're yep. going to win. Um, but it's not always about that. We, we've seen a lot, the MX-1390 and the T-69 outgunning the big tanks uh, like the IS-3. So it, it's honestly just about the players as opposed to the tank. And I, I always say this, um, you've got a set of tanks you can use in 742, but as long as a player is comfortable in it, it doesn't really matter which tank of those uh, you pick, unless it's something like Himmelsdorf, yep. unless you're from NA, then you, you don't pick an AMX-1390 <laughs> on it. Yeah, indeed, Shots fired yeah. again. But. Indeed, can you just stop <laughs> ripping on the NA scene? Like, you can see those gunner optics there. He's ready for this. It's quite, you know, it's, it's, I, I've got my gunners as well. They actually do help. <laughs> Especially in these lights, you know what I mean? Because, okay, when you're playing at home, you've got, you know, you've got your little lampshade, and it's all quite calm and quite neutral. But you come to these events, you know, there's a lot of lights shining in these guys' faces, and it's a lot of pressure on them. So they are just getting themselves sorted. We've all got some tweets coming through. Um, Ikabu there just saying, I think Denova should get this after an excellent warm-up. Pushed to the edge by Kazna while uh, Lemming Train are a little bit cold, which I think is a very fair point. point. I think it's it's always been very much down to team specifics. When I used to play um, myself uh, fairly competitively in a different title, it, it's, it comes down to the team. Some teams work better when they get to sit down, review the last games, have a chat, have a discussion about how they feel it went. Whereas others, you know, once they get that warm up, all they want to do is get straight into the match. They do not want to be waiting for anything else. You know, one to the other, you just keep playing through and it's, it's pretty much completely down to the team, you know, how they play, how the teams kind of respond to each other. Because as you mentioned, you know, some teams are very passionate, some teams get very riled up, and it can be the downfall as well. Because even if you do win a game, let's say, in the fifth and final map, if you've been, you know, nagging at each other, you know, really getting frustrated with your team, you're already in a bad state of mind. And sometimes you need to sit down and go, okay, all right, whatever happened in that game, let's, let's leave that behind us and focus on what's coming up. And you know, I, I think Lemming Train won't even have that discussion, whereas Denova may need to have it at some point if they were getting slightly frustrated because on paper, Denova should have had an easy game. They didn't, by a long shot. Lemming Train probably lived up to where they secured, I'd say. Um, Evil Panda Squad didn't have the best of games themselves. I think they struggled a little bit. I think they maybe need to find their feet. But in my eyes, I think it's very much down to the teams now. We saw very much individual players going huge. So we saw Phoenix doing beautifully international doing wonders and it's all coming down to how they turn up here and I, I've got to say it in my mind I was always a more a fan of just coming in you know straight off the back of another game mm. you're warmed up you're not you know no one else has been on your computer no one's touched the peripherals around you it's your settings you're already you're comfortable you already kind of got that focus you generally get after the first game and I feel that maybe lemming trains can come into this cold but they certainly will have to warm up very quickly here certainly um I was a fan of the opposite. I, I like coming cold. 
um, as long as I could play a few games beforehand. Yeah. Um, and you know, when I was playing, we we didn't have wooden peripherals, so we could just uh, we could just get on and, and and get on with the job at the end of the day. Yeah, but I played a game that took more than just plugging a ball mouse in. Basically, okay. you know, it's all about the driver settings. If someone changes, you know, window sense, if it's not on six out of the, of the eleven or six out of ten, if they change, you know, mouse Excel, it's these small factors that come into effect that can really throw you off your game. So we saw that snapshot in that one ten, for example. Let's say someone changed the settings. That at least like, what the hell's gone on here? Since I've sat down, I've been here two minutes, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's literally like if something changes and you go for your normal reactive shots and it's off, it's yeah. already thrown you out of your game. It's a muscle memory, right? Exactly. But then let's say something's changed slightly, then you start doubting yourself. Then you go, okay, is that my fault? Am I blaming my peripherals? Then you overthink it and you try and change something and it can really be a big downfall. I remember going to events and literally people brought a ruler that they'd measured their entire setup at home from distance to distance so they could replicate it perfectly. Mm. Like literally from, okay, chair to desk, desk to mouse mouse screen, everything to an absolute point. Uh, you may be able to guess we are filling here because these teams are taking their time to, to regale you with my war stories of playing a very, very bad game. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be very interesting to see two very unique ways of coming into this one. We're just going to see who it suits better. Yeah, I mean, uh, just if you have joined us, uh, we are just waiting on uh, De Nova and Lemming Train. But the results so far, uh, Kazna crew um, just lost against De Nova in the previous game. Before that, it was Lemming Train versus Evil Panda Squad. That was a 3-0 a stomp for Evil Panda Squad. Next game is the first winner's bracket, well, second winner's bracket game, or yep. just the first winner's bracket game, depending on which way you look at it. That's between these two, uh, Lemming Train and De Nova. Next game up is, is Kazna crew and uh, Evil Panda Squad, the two losers so far. Huh. Um, that's the update for today. Tomorrow, it'll be the winner's bracket, will be the winners of this this game here will be going on to fight Virtus Pro, the second seed yep. from the online stage. The, that's, the that's losers <laughs> between Evil Panda Squad, uh, the, the winner between Evil Panda Squad and Kazan Crew will be going on to fight Team Dignitas. The loser There's no easy way. is out. There is no easy There's way. There's no easy this. way. You're no, going to fight not. two of the best teams in the, the world. So full just stop. before they get too far into tank picture, I will throw it to you to cover over. We had a couple more tweets coming through. Uh, Lemming train for victory, and hopefully we'll see some special surprise tactics coming from them. Maybe a little bit of uh, special tactics. And it is definitely De Nova's game. Beating Kazna must uh, must have solidified solidified their confidence. So interesting stuff coming through. But why don't you take us through the picks we're seeing so far for Ruenberg? So this is, uh, yeah, this is Rumo, T1, AMX3090, double T1, uh, AMX5100, T1, AMX3090, 5100. That's for Lemming Train, AMX3090, T69 for Dinova. So the standard stuff coming out. Both teams have an AMX5100. Both teams have an AMX3090. Dinova has two. Uh, and obviously the T1s have been picked as well. I'm expecting Dinova to pick... Uh, another AMX 3090, uh, Kazan Crew to pick another AMX 3090 even as well. So um, I, I think, uh, oh, double T69 for Lemming Train. Oh, I'd say Kazan Crew, it's definitely Lemming Train even. Double <laughs> T69 uh, for Lemming Train. Yep. Um, bringing their tally up to double T69, AMX 3090, AMX 5200, double T1. And now waiting on Denova to pick their next two tanks. T69 is going to be their last pick. Um, that tier 8 American medium tank. Um, weighing on the last pick from Lemming Train, probably along the same lines. It looks this looks very standard from both teams. No outrageous pick, but if Lemming Train do pick something like that, um, it will be the next one. So expect uh, a T69 MX 3090, but also keep the IS3 and the 110 in the back of your minds because Lemming Train it's have been known to pick realm, it yeah, exactly of, uh, possibility and. Mm -hmm. It's just you know what they feel like doing, really, and uh, I, I'm I'm curious here. Cause it'd really throw off the other team as well. It really would. It, it it's it's a uh, it's a good pick, and I think uh, if Lemming Train, well, the Lemming Train definitely have the ability to make it work, um, but they're obviously discussing it because um, Carmen is is in deep thought, um, talking it through. Um, so anything they do pick would have been uh, a, a long lead, uh, discussed for a long time and and, and well thought through. So. Um, I think no light choices here. Definitely much. no light choices. But Poto Mako does look like he's in garage, so he's probably going to be the one picking that up. That guy plays usually the 5100, so um, perhaps that's going to be the choice. But they've already got one of those, so are they going to go for two? Indeed, they are going to go for two there. So uh, Lemming trains line up a double 5100, double T69, AMX mm. 3090, double T1. And for De Nova, uh, double AMX 3090, double T69, AMX 5100, double T1. They've got the more standard lineup, but they're both very good. 
Yeah, interesting uh, picks coming through. Now, I kind of want to get your bet on this map now. We've seen them, both these teams play, both having very different uh, routes to this point, both very, you know, some having a little bit of a harder route, some having a slightly easier one. Who do you think is going to get this first map? Because we predicted it right last time. I think, I think De Nova are going to get it. Okay, you're going for De Nova on this one. See, I, I'm going to go for Lemming Train here, and I'm not sure why, but I think De Nova had such a scare last time they played this. I think they're going to be overly cautious, and it might cost them a little bit of the confidence and the bravado they normally play with that could really hold them back. I, I, I just think Lemming Train's going to get this one, but then Prokhorovka, it's harder to, to deny De Nova. They, they had you know, quite a strong role on it. They had a lot of variation. They were willing to try out a couple of different lineups. They fell back to the one that they wanted eventually, so kind of thinking that that might be a better one for them. But, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to predict. Even Himmelsdorf was very close. <laughs> there was a wave to the camera there. So it's, it's very hard to predict here. Um, I'm not sure really if I want to put my money on anyone specifically. Um, I, I don't know. I, I backed Denova in the fact that they've had a warm-up. But, you know, Lemming Train could just turn up and absolutely roll them over if they really get their game going early on. And they're certainly not a team to mess around. You know, Evil Panda Squad beat them in the last offline event, pretty much, in the offline finals of season two. But they turned up and they put it behind them. And, well, we can see, you know, their strength really coming through here. And, and what sort of um, start do you think they're going to go for? I think, you know, we, we kind of have an idea of where they're this morning. Do you think we can see that double 1390 in the city? Or is this going to be more maybe the Virtus Pro tactic of the village? How do you think this one's going to go down? Well, you don't really lose anything by sending two MX 1390s into the uh, F road, into the middle. Um, so I think we could see that again from Denova. They seem to have picked the same lineup for that. So I think that, that's what they're going for. And double 5100 from Lemming Train. They either have to send one up right to the back of the maps and send them around or send them into the city. That's pretty much their two choices. Indeed. And, and which one do you think favours them a little bit better here? Because it's, it's hard to predict. It's, this is all kind of... Uh, it's not guesswork. It's, it's educated guesswork, if that even makes sense. <laughs> But it's, it's kind of hard to kind of predict these things. I guess we're going to have to just try and wait and find out how it really comes through. See, these guys are looking so focused as well. <laughs> we were saying earlier on that it was maybe Denova just having the steely faces, but it's certainly Lemming Train now as well. They are getting their game face on this time. They've had time to recoup, rethink, reset, and they've come in certainly with their game faces on. We are just about ready to get into the battle in a moment's time. And, uh, well, I can't wait to see this, because we've seen what an impact that first map can have. Once you get that confidence beside you, you can cause real trouble. We saw Kaznik crew picking up the first map up against Denova, and they did eventually get a two-to-one advantage, but lost it out in the end. So there you have it. Very, very close stuff, just in favor to Denova via our stats. But what does it matter when it all comes down to this? So in the south, in blue, on Ruenberg, it's going to be Denova. And in the north, in yellow, it's going to be Lemming Train. And what start are we seeing here from these guys? So the same start from Dino, we're just from the south. International and Yuri YR heading up over towards the middle center. The rest of the tanks going up uh, into the middle. Lemming Train, though, they're pretty much just sort of focusing all their efforts. The MX-61s obviously have to take the longer route because they want to go, not only they want to get into the uh, village first, but they also don't have the relays to deal any damage. And they can't compete with the T-69. International receives the first shell, but he will be able to connect onto Elian once he has that reload. YR there as well. He's got to be very careful, but FC Dino and Bad News are engaging. They are not stopping at all. The fire is coming through. Materius is going extraordinarily low. Down and out already. FC Dino picking that kill up. We are seeing the crossfire finally coming in for Lemming Train. But is it too little too late? Finally, Butcher does take down FC Dino. A reply comes through, though. This is a back and forth battle. The skirmish going down into the village section. But you're seeing even though 1390 is in slight trouble. We are seeing Alien very low. He's been kind of alleviated of that stress by Phoenix just taking him down. And now the final skirmish kind of being scattered across this map here. Nia Pazorni is going to push on to International on YR. Indeed, he's going to be going head first into these. He picks up one, gets immediately taken down by Phoenix. Lovely work from him. Not missing a beat in this game. Now, Polo Mako is just surrounded by them. Nothing to do here but die. And as much as I'd love to say you could pull this one off, Phoenix alive, Bad News alive, International, he'd have to pull out an absolute magic trick to pull this one off. De Nova look hungry already in this game. And the Lemming Train have a rude awakening now. He's trying to find a better position maybe to get this one going. Waiting on that reload to be available. You can see the bar just loading below his name in the top left side. Left on 606 HP is not a lot. Another shell will take it even lower. And there we have it. International claiming another kill this game. Leaving just the tier ones alive. Carmen, the team captain, just has to face down the opponent. And a perfect start for Denova. Brilliant little game. Uh, that really does prove 
that the MX-3090 is into the middle can work and you need to counter it with your own MX-3090 because uh, basically Lemming Train's idea was they have the 250-300s which provide so much firepower, they can shoot the T-69s in the middle, but the problem is uh, is the AMX 3090s could just snipe them out. They could take those AMX 5100s as long as the other team, uh, their own team members were in the right position so they could get the crossfires on. So basically, Lemming Train went for the late game, but yep. Dinova went for the early game and it went all in their favor uh, because they got that early damage. Um, international 1.9k, while Elian only that uh, hit 1.1k in his AMX 3090 and he was the top damage guy there. Um, so just a generally a poor game from Lemming Train, but that's how Ruenberg work. It literally can be like that. Um, it's not indicative of how, of how the rest of the maps will be played out. It's just who can get that early advantage or who can just sit back and try a different strategy and innovate. I am very surprised to know we went for that strategy again as well. How much faith did they just put in those players in those early 90s to go, okay, you had a bad first time you played this, but the second time you can do this. And they did. Phoenix picking up two kills in that game and, you know, people like that just really supporting international as well, doing the damage. It was absolutely fantastic to watch. So perfect start, already building the confidence, coming off the back of a victory as well just moments ago. Now they've got to kind of turn their minds towards Prokhorovka. That's a completely different ball game within itself. Now, Denova had their first real struggle trying to claim a, you know, a victory on this one. They tried several things. Now, what sort of lineup are we going to see here? Are we going to see the 416 in play? Are we going to see the T... Yeah, was, it, was it a T32 or a Pershing we saw coming out? We saw, we saw both. We did see both, indeed. They went back to that more defensive game, didn't they, afterwards? But they won on the 416. So maybe they're more confident in the 416 now, do you think? I, think? I think they just need to make sure that they play it correctly. The 416 is... is is quite hard to play because of that turret traverse. Um, yes. It really does struggle when you get when it gets when you get close to it. So, um, yeah, it just depends on the player. Phoenix seems very confident in it, so there's a good chance he'll be picking it. But double T1 for Lemming Train, double T1 for uh, Zinova, AMX 3090 T69 for uh, the Lemming Trains, uh, AMX 3090 times two for Dinova. So standard picks at the beginning as per, um, just to make sure of those American and those French tanks that everyone seems to adore. Um, Lemon Train taking a, another AMX 3090, another T69. Um, so a couple Fairly of pieces. Uh, yeah, two T69s, yeah. um, three MX 3090s, I think, is pretty much the standard. I think that's where Dinova's going. Maybe a 416 in there, maybe a Pershing in there. Um, but the T69 and the Pershing are, are very similar. They're like brothers. Okay, they have. They might do. They might grow up slightly differently. One might do more damage in a short period of time, but one is, is goes for the sustained battle. Uh, AMX 3090 T69 for Lemon Chain was the last pick, waiting for uh, Dinova's pick. This is where stuff gets serious. This is where they can start countering lineups yep. and coming up with, with with ingenious things. Interesting if they do end up picking that Pershing, which they, indeed they are, uh, alongside the AMX 3090. Um, so now it's Lemon Train's pick. Lemon Train's turn to pick their last tank. Yeah, not uh, running with the four ones. Interesting. Do you think they just weren't happy with it, or do you think it wouldn't work against Lemon Train? Maybe. Well, they could still pick it. Um, oh, that's a very good point. Could still pick it as their last tank, but um, <coughs> yeah, I think they will. I think they've got a good chance. But the last thing they pick a Pershing, they picked it alongside a T32. Mm. But <coughs> yeah, it's fifty-fifty. Yeah, very much up in the air. Discussions being had here. For the Lemming Train side, just uh, can just kind of mulling over the options they have. You know, their last choices didn't really pay off. Nothing too crazy with that pick coming through there. Uh, quite standard, really. Yeah, it's the MX3090. <coughs> um, is yeah, it's indeed the last pick for Lemming yep. Train, making their lineup the most standard, I guess you could call it, the Triple AMX3090, uh, Double T69, Double T1. Um, last pick from Dinova is going to be the T69, so wow. uh, the same lineup. The only difference is that they've picked a Pershing instead of a T69. Not fancying the 416 in the hands of Phoenix. That's, that's certainly something to keep your eyes on. He's going for the Pershing instead, so very different start here already. Certainly uh, changing things up per opponent, I can imagine, and just you know making sure they're playing to their strengths as well as you know the weaknesses of the opposition of Lemming Train. And already with one map beside them, should I say, for Denova, they have, you know, a little bit of room to breathe. Whereas Lemming Train now need to step up. You do not want to give Denova any sort of chances. If you give them, you know, an inch, they will take a mile and they'll happily run with that. And Lemming Train kind of have that in mind now. They know it. You can see uh, Carmen being very, very serious there. Joking around earlier, certainly gone away. That is a face of focus if I've ever seen one. 
And I, I just can imagine what's going through their heads right now is, is considering the options. Where do they go? How do they style this one out? Do they go to that village side? Do they go for more of a standard exchange? What do you think they're going to go for? Um, I think with the Pershing, I think Dinova's going to go up the middle. Um, for Lemming Train, it's it's I'm more more inclined to say towards the right side, towards that village. Um, but it, it, it again, it's Prokhorovka. It's an, an open canvas of a map. You can really just draw whatever kind of tactics you have on there, um, and and they could end up working. But you know, the three basic op options are uh, in the middle, towards the left side, or towards the village. Well, we will have to find out in a moment because we are almost ready to get in game. See Ronnie there just. Kind of barking out the last orders to his boys, making sure they are certainly in the right frame of mind now because we are 10 seconds away from jumping into this one. It'll be Lemming Train with that disadvantage. They've got to get this game. They have to get this map. They cannot allow Denova to start building that confidence. So, guys, into the battle we go. In the south in yellow it will be the Lemming Train facing off against the northern. Rather blue Denova currently with a one map advantage. And what are we seeing them playing like so far? So, Denova actually trying something a little bit new. They're sending most of their tanks over towards the right side of the middle. And that's Phoenix in the T69. Uh, we need the Poo in that tier one, just uh, making sure the left side is not uh, pounced upon. And FC Dynamo in the middle just to provide the backup all round. Uh, for Kasna Crew, just charging up the middle, doing their st oh, Kasna Crew, Lemming Train even, uh, charging up the middle uh, with most of their tanks, all more towards the village side, um, probably just ready and waiting because uh, obviously the further you are towards the village, the easier it is to get, the closer you are to the village, the easier it is to get in there. Um, and get safe because there is so many houses there and there's, there's so much cover. Also, you can uh, take the hill as an option. Uh, first couple of blind shots coming out there. For one from Phoenix, Elif Potomako spotting out. So now Lemming Train know uh, roughly where Denova are. They know at least uh, the T69 and the Pershing is. And interestingly enough, Denova fairly struggled um, with their opposition when they did go into that village area. They, they drew the map out eventually because of the Veco and international um, kind of ordeal, but they didn't have you know that kind of flawless plan in their mind to really bring them through it so this time not fancying it and Lemming Train certainly kind of cutting off the option for uh, Denova if they wanted to get in towards there it's a very similar setup now they've calmed down into it I'm curious to see if it's Phoenix right at the back there I don't think it is actually yeah, no it, it's not he's, he's kind of switched things up so actually a very different start coming out <laughs> excuse me I thought it was a Phoenix further back but this time obviously not in the 416 very different tank now in his hands gonna get those a couple of shots across Maybe hoping to catch a couple of players out and Alien sitting pretty far back, hoping to get a nice shot through, maybe towards Phoenix. Doesn't get the connection he wanted, sadly, but that would have been a lovely start if he does manage to land one of these. He, he will give him his team a little bit of an advantage. Not much. He does actually receive one his own, so a bit of his own medicine there, down to 1195. Brilliant shot there from uh, Lemming Train. So they're getting themselves into this battle, battle slowly but surely. Only two minutes and ten seconds in. Lemming Train starting to rotate, actually sending the MX 1390s back. Probably going to send them around up towards the village area. Uh, maybe even start looking towards the north. Um, but this is the same strategy uh, Dinova used against Kazna earlier today, but without that T32. Let's see how that one pays off here. See if they can pull it off again, because as, as you mentioned, you know, the Lemming Train switching things up, getting over that railroad, going to be fighting a little bit from maybe uh, further back, maybe up on the hill, completely depending on where they feel they can drag Denova towards and dear old Ron just chilling out in his bush looking for anyone he can find. You can see the shells whizzing past him, that's coming out from Phoenix again just trying to lay down some fire and they've already kind of worked out where the opposition aren't at least so they can kind of maybe hedge a guess towards where they're heading which is towards that village. Already Potomaco in there in that 1390 so leading the way and well, the Nova now know kind of where they are, but they don't have the exact spots, and they don't actually have anyone on that hillside this time. So they've gone for the all-in towards that one to six line, and I'm wondering if that's going to pay off. Maybe they're kind of regretting pulling International over towards the other side this time and not putting him over on that hill. Yeah, it, it could be. It could be a, end up being a bad move there. But uh, more shots are exchanged. Uh, uh, looks like uh, Nia Pizzoni has taken one there. Um, he's gone down a couple of hundred HP from uh, the AMX 1390 or Phoenix even. Um, he's obviously in charge of sniping because it's the uh, Pershing. It is a great gun there and great accuracy, great aim, uh, reload time, about six and a half seconds. Uh, but for Lemming Train, at least they're testing the waters. First of all, they want to take it down Winnie the Pooh in that tier one. And that's going to be Butcher just charging over across. He might regret that decision. <laughs> and gets away almost scot free, only receiving one there down to 853. That's 247 damage onto him. But advantage, Lemming Train. Yeah, and look at the map presence they have. Um, 
Brilliant play from Carmen, who's the player further pushed up down that four line. Really getting the information through, just kind of keeping eyes on Phoenix. So information constantly coming through to their teammates. And they've just got really nice map control. But can they work out where Carmen is is the big thing. So they need to remove him if they fancy making a push out of this. They have to, they have to get him out of the game. Otherwise, um, yep. he's, he's just going to spot them out continuously. Uh, Snip is, is still alive oh. and kicking. Elian does receive a big one. Fantastic sniping shot from Phoenix. Uh, taking Elian down, one shot, eight, four, six left on him. Um, but this is this this is this map in a nutshell. It it, it literally is polarized. Apart from uh, T1 and the Carmen in the middle, trying to change things, also snip towards the base of of Lemming Train. Um, and 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 you can see Phoenix trying to get some uh, blind shots out. They know they're getting spotted because um, they obviously have uh, uh, oh. six cents. Yeah. So the bulbs continue to be popping, and they know okay, there's nothing else that could spot me. So there must be something in this bush. And that's what International is trying to find out. But the problem is, when you're playing an auto-loading tank and you're trying to do blind shots, is that you end up just lo losing shells and you have to reload. So you prefer to have someone like Phoenix who can continuously reload and has a fair few shells uh, in, in storage just to shoot and make those connections for you. Yeah, and I assure you, the opposition of uh, Lemon Trader will be keeping note of how many shells are coming towards them. If they can work out that their player's on reload for quite some time, They'll make the most of it. We are already seeing a little bit of a play going out from Tiris. They're letting a couple of shells go, trying to find any player who's kind of outstaying the welcome. Alien doing the same thing over the railroad. They're getting a little bit edgy here, Lemming Train. They're kind of uh, slowly but surely peeking up and over the ledge. International once again showing up. Doesn't get connected. Yes, he does. Taking down a nice little bit of HP there. 865 left on towards him. And the more they work away, the more viable a push might be because let's bear in mind this Bazzoni, Butcher and Alien receive damage themselves. They have to do more than that to even make it a viable option. Otherwise, it's going to be thrown away at map. It doesn't look like, uh, judging by Lemming Train's mouths, that they're actually talking that much. I'm quite happy to stick back. They've obviously talked over... Uh, the various options that they that they have and, and the various tactics that Dinova could use. Um, and also down a map at this point after losing Ruenberg uh, by quite some margin. Uh, Wiles uh, setting up, set himself up in a bush. He's going to be looking over the map. Uh, Materius is spotted there. Um, but the tier ones uh, for Lemming Train up in the south will provide a, a lot of pestilence, if that's the word. Um, it is now, we'll make it's, it. It's the word now. Someone add that to the dictionary, Oxford, whatever. Whoever does dictionaries Oxford these days. Oxford whatever. That's, that's how you communicate with them. Oxford whatever. Whoever does the Oxford dictionaries these days, I don't even know. Uh, but yeah, Potomaco in a bit of a dangerous position there. Um, looking out over the yeah. field. He does uh, get a spot onto bad news or uh, maybe even the MX-1390. But do you know the, what I've noticed about them? They're very, very passive on this map. Yeah, they really don't... <clears throat> like taking the initiative here. So they may get a slight opening, but they don't want to go for it just yet. You can see Phoenix chomping at the bit to get some connections because every now and then they just keep seeing these players popping up on the horizon. It's almost teasing them to peer over, but they're holding on. They're being very disciplined. They know what's at stake now. The uh, games have not been easy to this point for either side, uh, even more so for Denova. So this disciplined play is what they need. They're, they need to force out the mistakes from Lemon Train, understand how they like to play, and then work towards it. Um, right now, it seems that they are rotating two players back, leaving the vast amount of their players present towards that middle section, but still, there's a good couple of players kind of heading off. It's FC Dynamo. I can imagine the other 1390 uh, YR doing just the same, but Butcher is laying in wait, so he's going to be spotted out there, but he's going to be getting the shells through. He's going to have to back away now, because there's already a pressure being added on. You can see that shell landing just centimeters apart, so Butcher now has to readjust and lose a little bit more of the presence on this map. Yeah, he's going to be, have to be, get, get readjust pretty quickly because he got FC Dynamo yeah. behind him. And I think that was the best move, even though he got, did get spotted pretty early on, pushing up towards the north. Two MX-1390s onto one, you'll get absolutely British. This is actually a, a tactic Lemming Train used against Virtus Pro and, and one against them on, on Prokhorovka, pushing those two MX-1390s onto one, and that's what FC Dynamo is doing. But he's doing it on his own. Yeah, indeed, very much alone. We did see some more aggressive play coming out from the rest of Denova, pushing across the map slowly but surely. He may have some company joining him soon, but for now he is uh, pretty much the uh, lone man. But now he does have company. Butcher might be in a bit of trouble. He's trying to negate the presence of them. Oh, a little bit of fire comes in, making them back away. And Butcher reclaiming this side of the map now. He's had to fend them off, but 
he certainly needed help for it because we are seeing the rest of the tanks now making their move in, maybe trying to split their attention. Alien now needs to claim this one. His Pizzoni is now steps away from Bad News and Phoenix, who are starting to make their move. But Mako needs to be careful. The fire does come in towards the Denova side. They're going low. Bad News is going fairly low now. Can they get any more? So is Phoenix, but there's not enough fire coming in towards them. They're just still trying to really pester the opponent. But keep your eyes on those health bars because they are not looking pretty right now for Denova, even though they are a map to the good. They're still trying to get right into the face of Lemon Train, who are just readjusting. And also the MX-39s for Denova are actually providing a lot of cover fire for uh, for them, for Denova. So they've got to be very careful of them. Butcher's going to have to retreat out. And the thing is about the MX-1390, does have a very long read while once again it's punished. Uh, and Lemon Train being very tentative, but they are going to go in. Indeed, Butcher now heading his uh, himself into three players. He's going absolutely hell for leather here. Bad news, International all staring down, not landing the perfect shells. He's still standing. Polo Mako now joining him. They need some backup here because Bad News is back in the hell away and there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide particularly. As we are seeing Carmen trying to keep eyes on these guys, but it's a matter of time for he's taken down, but it's another shell away from the team. Uh, he just gets rammed out there, so unlucky for some, but still further fire towards Materials. He's going to be taken down by FC Dynamo. That was a big kill coming through, but look at Bad News, 99 HP. Phoenix isn't too healthy either. This could go Living Train's way if they can land these shells in the next couple of minutes, but they need to do it pretty damn quickly because the time has just about run out and Denova made the move at the right time then. Taking another brilliant map. Pokrovka in the last minute and a half to win on is not an easy feat. It's not a mean feat at all. So another win going to Denova's court. Surprisingly, Lemming Train not seem, seeming to put up the fight we thought they would do. Um, and, you know, Pershing, yeah. Phoenix doing 1.4k. Uh, Materia is doing 1.2k in his T69. So a pretty close uh, game, I think. Some some mistakes from the side of Lemming Train. They should have just pushed in onto those uh, middle tanks because they did the MX-1390 in the north did commit to try and kill Butcher uh, and did use quite a few shells there. Um, but you know Phoenix in that T69, he provided so much backup, a constant pester and the constant constant damage. You know no one could deal with it on the side of Lemming Train. They didn't have anything that wasn't an autoloader, so they had to reload. And even when Poto Mac had a good amount of HP and he could have finished off two or three tanks. He couldn't because he had yep. one shell left. One shell equals 240 damage average. It's not enough to take out a couple of 400 uh, damage, uh, 400 HP tanks. It just isn't enough. And it was just the plated time they used as well. They knew that the clock was running down and they timed it perfectly. That Living Train, by the time they had possibly a reply brewing, it was too little too late. So we'll be going to the third map, <coughs> excuse me, which will be Himmelsdorf. Now we are seeing a two to zero in favor of Nova Lemming Train. We said there's a possibility they're coming in cold to this, and I think that might be a very big factor here because they really are not finding their feet at all. They're struggling to even make an impact. They're, they're, they're being led by Denova in every game so far, and Denova showed their real worth on Himmelsdorf, so their confidence is already sky high on this map. You don't need to kind of help them out at all, but I'm worried for uh, Lemming Train here because they now need to make a comeback on probably the harder map to do it on, and the tank picks are beginning. Uh, double T1 for both teams. Uh, probably going to go for the triple uh, IS3 double 5100. That is uh, Lemming Train for Denova. I think that triple AMX 5100 uh, double IS3 is, is the normal uh, tank lineup. So IS3 AMX 5100 for Denova. Say double IS3 going to uh, Lemming Train. Um, maybe that Waffentrager is going to be picked by going to uh, be picked by Lemming Train. We've seen that before from them. T32 AMX 5100, same as last time. Remember, Denova picked up the T32. Against uh, Kazna Crew, double 5100 for Lemming Train, last pick from Dinova, MX5100. But that t early T32 pick could be indicative of another strange pick um, for Dinova, but they're going to pick the 5100, so that's, that's standard, I guess. Um, so triple 5100, IS3, uh, T32, double T1 for them, uh, as uh, Lemming Train have to decide what their last tank will be. Will it be the 5100 or will it be the IS3, or maybe even a T32 and go with the same lineup? as uh, their compatriots, their, their comrades, their rifles as well, um, Denova. So, interesting stuff. AMX 5100 is going to be the last pick from Lemming Train, so completely standard triple AMX 5100, double IS3, double T1 for them. Um, at the moment, 2-0 down against Denova. What can they do to take it back on this map? And I, I've said it time and time again, Lemming Train aren't the strongest map, uh, not so strong on Himmelsdorf, whilst yeah. Denova 
are very, very strong. Okay, they struggled a little bit against uh, against Kazna crew, but generally they can find their feet um, and they can end up winning the game. Well, uh, Lemon Train certainly have to find their feet fast. This is possibly the last chance them to really do something special and turn this one around because they did such a great job in their first game. They made it look so easy. I don't know if that's just a reflection of their opponent or maybe they're just not as focused as they were and calm and slowly but surely sinking his, to his chair, just losing that kind of real focus he had before. Uh, well, the teams are getting ready now and we are seeing obviously the last of the tank picks coming through. And I think we already know who your favorite's going to be on this map. It's got to be Denova. They're so strong on it. Even when they were really struggling in the previous matchups, they showed their strength here and they finally kind of came together. But <laughs> Denova's got a friend or a fan up there. Look at that t-shirt. That is fantastic. Everyone loves seeing that. And it's always good. But um, yeah, money where it is. This could be three maps back to back. Certainly could be. Um, I would be slightly surprised, to be honest. 3-0 uh, to, to, to Denova. Who would have expected that at the beginning? So I predict Lemming Train to win. Um, once again, showing that my predictions are quite often wrong. Whereas mine are fantastic. Yeah, you've been pretty spot on at the moment, which, yeah. is, which is surprising. So I think I should be the expert here, and you can do play-by-play. Mm. -play. Mm. How about that? Sure. Well, probably probably a good idea, actually. But we'll probably get fired if we do this. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure. All right, maybe 50, not 50, now. 50, 50. Yeah, these choices. Choices, choices, eh? But still, we are almost ready to get underway. This could be the deciding map here. The first two went strongly in favor to Denova. Fantastic play in the last kind of moments of Prokhorovka, but can they replicate that once again into Himmelsdorf? They're really defining map in their last matchup. So let's get into this one in the north, in that golden yellow. It will be Lemming Train now with it all to do. Two maps against them. They need three to win. And Denova already have two in the back. You're in the south in blue, and that is a very unique start coming out. Do take me through what they're going going for here. So Denova heading it pretty much all over towards the left of four of their tanks, at least only sending one AMX 5200 up the hill. Uh, for Lemming Train, they're sending three of their tanks up the hill, all three wow. AMX 5200. Materius already getting spotted out there in his IS-3 near, near Pazorni, and Materius are those two IS-3s over towards the left side, and the tier one's obviously going to be sitting in that uh, abandoned train uh, train uh, tra train station, I guess it is. Um, but three fifty one hundred on the hill. They've also got a T one there, I do believe. So that's going to be going forward, getting the spots out. Um, but this is what you have to deal with. The man on your screen right now. Bad news. He is hull down. He is playing the T thirty two. So nothing you chuck at that T thirty two mantle that will penetrate. Even the IS three with two hundred and sixty five millimeters of penetration, it won't even touch the 300, 298 millimeters of that Tari Materius getting punished as I predicted, down to one one. 5-5, advantage to Denova. Yeah, indeed. And it's, it's a really interesting play they're bringing now. They make it so hard to be around that D-line for any player there, pretty much. That <laughs> Stop giggling at me. The, the tank can just cause so much hassle more than anything. Phoenix has been caught out, though. Uh, Alien now moving in. This could mean real trouble. He doesn't have the first shot. Oh! <laughs> Oh. What a fantastic play by Phoenix. Will be punished now, but does he have enough time to get away? 7 6 4 HP. Butcher now joining in on the hunt. This could come down to a massive moment for these guys, but what a stunning shot to be able to track him like that in the moment that it mattered. Elian just got completely outplayed. He got tracked, and then Phoenix did the same amount of damage Elian did to him, despite the fact that he was moving. But Lemming Train certainly have got themselves into this game. A very aggressive move. Um, that spawns, if there was two against Phoenix, it would have been another story, and I think he would have got taken down. But no move from Denova. Surprisingly, they're not reacting to this a very concerted push by 251ers, the two they spotted onto their one. Perhaps a good thing as well, because they're predicting that Lemming Train are going to be heading back. Protomaco just takes a big shell from that uh, T32 down to 1036. <laughs> so, kind of damage wise, I would say it's pretty even, or even although. Definitely De Nova in the driving scene in that respect. Bad News seems to have taken eight damage. I'm not sure if that was <laughs> from uh, what that was from. Maybe he got crashed into or something. Yeah, um, but now Lemming Train on the offensive once again. Butcher, Materius, and Elian leading the charge going forwards. Very interesting move for Cousin from the north. It's very, very difficult to push along that banana road. Well, they're certainly giving it a try, and they might have a fairly free route at the moment, but it won't take long for these guys to get back around, and already the play from Phoenix has just defined how great Denova can be, but we are seeing a very interesting kind of uh, bit of play coming out. We are seeing the rest of the tanks kind of forming around the bottom by that K-line, 
for Denova, whereas Materia is going for a little bit of a stroll up that banana line, looking for his way through. That T32 is still in the same position with Bad News, who's been laying down fire, being a real pest. But we are seeing Denova swinging back round towards a more defensive posture that could really cause trouble for Lemming Train. But this is a genius move by Lemming Train because they've literally just penetrated through a position which uh, Denova have just rotated off. They have absolute free reign across that G line. They can do whatever they want. Wow. Um, and once uh, Denova have committed to that hill, uh, and, and engage that T1 and the AMX 6200 up there, they're pretty much stuck there. And the three tanks they're going across the bottom, as well as uh, the uh, IS-3 stuck in the middle of the T1, as long as they Four come from the other the side, team. they can take down Bad News very, very quickly. Why are taking down Carmen? That's going to be advantage to uh, Denova, but Materius getting caught with his turret the wrong round. Does actually take him out. Fantastic little shot there. Butcher also charging across the middle, and now Denova on the rotate. Yeah, here comes the cavalry indeed. Materius, Butcher, Nias, Pizzorni, and Alien all found in spot. That T32 is going to be absolutely decimated if it's not careful. Even uh, now, oh, look at Potomac around the back. That is absolutely unbelievable play. He could be really coming through here. This could be really, really smart, but there we go. Finally, Bad News is getting absolutely punished down to 34 HP. Butcher should be able to allow this one, and he does it. But the exchange now will be going down by the bottom of the banana line. Phoenix around the back, Polo Mako coming through. This is going to be incredible stuff here. Oh my god, Polo Mako needs to land a shot. Alien going low. This could be over and saying Polo Mako's down at 75 HP. He's finally gone down. And Denova holding on by a split second. But can they get the damage done? Butcher finding YR. This is going back and forth. Oh my god. But International still has full HP. Poto Mako just doing a really bad job. Uh, Butcher actually getting tracked to mill. That will allow two shots, but those IS3s have 11 seconds. But half of his HP has been wiped up near Pazorni. He needs to find himself into this game. He's the only one left. He's their only hope because the Nova are on the warpath. And it's just about reloads right now. And my god, International just spanks Alien. Finally, a reply comes in from Nils Pizzoni, but is it too little too late? I just don't know right now. He's brought back all even 3v3. Nils Pizzoni is in the fantastic position here. Phoenix coming around the side. Can he land these shells or are they backing away just enough? They're all going through this one now. It's literally a game of cat and mouse at the moment. Any player who takes a wrong turn, looks down the wrong way, doesn't expect the opponent could be punished. And Nils Pizzoni is literally like a shark at the moment, hunting down, looking for the opponents. And they're still trying to find their way through. You could catch a glimpse of them now. They are very, very close. So paranoid, looking for his way around, looking for the opponents at any angle. And right now, Denova are playing very carefully. Ron catching a glimpse of someone there. That's a tier one exchange. As important as it is, these guys are right on the verge now. And Phoenix making his way forward. This could be huge. This could be huge because uh, Phoenix can actually take one shot pretty much uh, from the IS-3 and they're both on a finished reload. This is going to be two versus one. Nier Pizzorni has got to have his game of his life to take these two. Nier Pizzorni now needs to do the damage. Phoenix is low as is FC Dino, but here comes International providing cover, pushing Nier Pizzorni away. Ms Materius now comes in, oh. but Butcher's found FC Dynamo. That could have turned this one around. Lemon Train are still in this game, but can they hold on here? But oh. Phoenix and International doing the damage. It's a 2v2 now. Phoenix and International up against Materius and Nier Pizzorni. Nier Pizzorni staring down International first shell will connect but look at that materials has gone down phoenix doing the work it's a 2v1 this could be all over nears pizzoni it's all up to you again can you pull it through oh, oh my god not like that he's down so low international now moving in with phoenix this could be the killing blow oh beautiful play could have from denova playing from the baseline now just snip alive and as much as I'd love to see him do something here, it is almost over. And that was a very long, ambitious range shot from Phoenix there. But beautiful play from Denova. They didn't have the advantage from the offset. There it goes, Denova. You've got to be pleased with that one. That was a fantastic bit of play. I would, if I was Poe Mako, I would be kicking myself now. Those three or four shots he had into the side of Denova, just doing absolutely no damage, hitting the tracks, hitting the space armor on the side of the IS-3 doing nothing. That's 1,000, oh about 900 to 1,000 damage just negated. Yeah, I've Phoenix. got to say it, guys. Those two. 2.6k for Phoenix, 2.3k for International. Highest damage dealer from the side of Lemmy Train is Elian there with 2,080. Followed closely by Materius with almost 1.8k. But look at this. Potomako, 281 damage. If we could just quickly see how many shots he made uh, in that uh, AMX 5100, it would be brilliant. But he was about four or five shells. That's 900 to 1,200 damage. Uh, but he did 281. That was the winning and losing point for the sided Lemming train. Although, at the end, when it was three versus three, it could have gone both ways.
Okay, the one other thing I just really want to point out there is that Phoenix got four kills. Mm -hmm. Four. And that's after that first initial clutch bit of play when he tracked the player as he was just being pushed. It was Alien who kind of came down that uh, of the hill and he tracked him, held him in place. Imagine if he went down, he didn't land that tracking shot. That could have gone completely differently. If Phoenix was taken out early, that game could have swung in favor to the opposition. Lemming Train, you know, it, it didn't go well from the start there and Denova finally showing what they're made of. That's the Denova we know. Yeah. That's what Denova can do and they've certainly proved they can do it at an atmosphere like this. Certainly, Lemming Train just being derailed by Denova in that game. Uh, I think 3-0 victory after getting 3-0. Sorry, I can't help myself. Uh, you love it, really. Um, but yeah, nice. you just don't have the wit and intellect to come up with these brilliant, fantastic puns. Uh, but aside for Lauren's stupidity, um, Dinova's games just stepping it up after that, incredibly struggling against Kazna crew. And they're wiping the floor with, some agree, an insuperior team, which is, of course, uh, uh, Lemming Train and, and Kazna crew. They're just showing how strong they are. And I honestly yep. think the game between Evil Panel Squad and Kazna crew is going to be unbelievably close. And that's not too far away either. But before we kind of wrap ourselves up from this game and go into the next, let's hear exactly how the guys from Denova are feeling because they have got to be pumped up after that game. So let's pass back over to Mitch, who's waiting on the stage. series of events those last few games were fantastic. 3-0 win to Denova and the man at the helm of all this, Ronnie, you're back on stage. We shared a bit of a joke. I said to you, if you, if you don't want to come up, come up here, you've got to stop winning. But again, again, the juggernaut that is Denova has made it through. 3-0, what a strong game, especially after what a tug of war it was against the Kasner crew. Tell me, did you have a strategy planned for these guys? Because you saw them earlier on today. They played very, very strong against EPS. Uh, you know, do you have anything, you know, you, you talked about special tactics on the video beforehand. Did you have any for these guys? That was exactly the case uh, I was talking about before. We prepared uh, a special tactics from Ruinberg's house, from uh, um, Himmelsdorf's house also, and uh, for Prokhorovka uh, against the uh, Lemming train, we changed the setup compared to the Crew game. Uh, and uh, our win against Kazna Crew gave us enough confidence to play this match as we wanted. So it was um, uh, played uh, better by us and we did uh, not so many mistakes as in, in previous match. And um, I am the captain, but I want to thank our uh, player Phoenix who was coordinating the heavies in the last fight and we want him as dark sense to him. So cheers to our Phoenix, our rising star. Yeah. Absolutely astonishing. Phoenix and International in that last game got almost 5k damage between the two of them. Was a huge performance. Well, look, I won't keep you any longer. You spent enough time up here today. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause with Denova. What a fantastic series. And trust me, we haven't seen the last of them. They'll be back tomorrow to, to play in the second stage of things. But we're not quite done here yet, ladies and gentlemen. No, indeed. We're still going to see Lemming Train again a little bit later on. We are now going to switch over to some of the loser bracket games. So it'll be good to see EPS up here on the stage again. But we're going to go to a bit of a break. Take a breath again. This time it wasn't so exciting in terms of how close or how long the games went for, but just the amount of explosive action that we saw in those games. Again, relax. Don't forget to tweet us out there at, uh, at WGLEU, hashtag WGLEU as well. Get in on the conversation because it's going off. A lot of opinion, a lot of fantastic cross-pollination as well through regions. A lot of people having a lot to say about these games. Guys, don't go too far. Go get a drink of water. Go and stretch your legs or whatever you want to do. We'll be back here very shortly.
and we are back ladies and gentlemen on the first day of the Wargaming.net League EU Season 3 Finals. Well, three games have been played already and I'm again not alone, I'm joined by David Thoris Kautsky, team captain of Odin Mortis. Thank you for joining me. How are you doing? I'm happy, I'm glad to join. That's, that's awesome to have you here because your team sadly couldn't quite quali qualify for the finals. We actually feared for you from dropping out of the league. What happened during the season? Oh, it was crazy season for, for us. Lots of push-ups, push-downs, and sadly in the end, you are right, we didn't make it. But uh, we want to be on every single offline event, so we just jump in the car and drive to this amazing place in Tychy, in Poland. And um, do you enjoy being here? Yeah, it's really great. Uh, all the scenery there and the location where the, lo uh, the scene is, it's uh, strange, but it's really great looking. And I hope that you see it from the stream as well. I think the theme is perfectly fitting for our game, right? So you said you love going to offline events. Does this event where you have to sit in the audience give you motivation to work harder on your performance the next season? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, great to be there just by the visitor because we can watch the teams from different angles, see their tactics and uh, enjoy the fun like just by watching and don't have to stress everything. But on next uh, season finals we want to be as uh, members, not just the watchers. That, that's, that's, quite, that's quite good. <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to that because having you guys around on events is always great fun. Because, I don't know, you bring some color in here somehow. You're always like in a good mood and having fun with the audience, having fun with the stuff. Do you enjoy being su such an, kind of an idol for other teams maybe that should go out more? and. Uh, try talk more to, to other people? Yeah, we are trying to do our best because uh, we play this for the audience. We don't play it for just others. And if the audience is happy, everyone is happy. So we just try to do the best that everyone is enjoying the show. That, that sounds awesome. So fun is a big part of your strategy, maybe? Yeah, we are, well, we are maybe professionals, but we, are, we want to have fun on the first place. It's still kind of a hobby, right? Yeah, it's hobby, but we want to take it more serious on the next season. That sounds great. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And you people at home, you still have, get, have the chance to get involved via our social media platforms on facebook.com slash WGLEU and Twitter. You can find us by just looking for the hashtag WGLEU where you can see what other people just think of our lovely production or maybe hand in your predictions for the upcoming matchup yourself. It will be Kasna Kruvi versus Evil Panda Squad. What's your prediction on this one? Oh, well, this will be quite uh, interesting to watch. I think it's uh, closely to the Kasna because they are in better shape here in this event. But uh, EPS, it's their home event, so they might just reinforce and show us what they can do. That's kind of the beauty of offline events in World of Tanks, right? It's suddenly everyone goes mental and you can't just predict the outcome of a, of a matchup that's pretty clear on paper. So do you think that you, will show, you would have shown a better performance here in the offline venue than in the season itself if you could have qualified for the finals? Yeah, when I speak for our team, we are just famous that in offlines we play 150%. So you just can't predict it. Pretty much. Thank you very much again. And you guys at home, don't go anywhere. Five minutes until the next match starts. That's pretty much all from me. I'm Melly. See you later.